Hello folks and welcome back to By Spring. Here we are still in August, as you see, might as well for a little bit because we've been doing some contract work now in between the episodes. And including that social contract which we got quite a bit of money in bells. Also we did the harvesting contract and we got a couple of grand extra in terms with crops and that so if we have a look we got 59,500 from the bells and 2,000 pounds from the canoe we sold and then an additional 14 grand from the contract income everything else just ignore that that's just bits of setting up series and all that who are but yeah we've got two more news on side issue we got a contract on field 70 need to take those to the BGA and a contract on 125 we need to take those to the Bali Spring garage cell point is it garage cell point is it called yeah Bali Spring garage Oops. actually one thing I will do is turn on traffic once more yeah, I turn off. It's like lovely map this is. Getting through the lanes, not an issue. However, when it comes to the workers, they are a pain in the rear end to deal with. <laughs> so whilst I was just relaxing between episodes, just not full, get just a little bit done. But one thing I've learned is doing like the contracts on feels like 103, 118. They're quite hilly. And the Deutz Far barely does struggle with it. Even though the, the mowers is like 10 or 20 horsepower below what's recommended. But even then, usually it'll work fine if the ground is flat. But on these slopes, even like this one here, a gentle one on 125, it does struggle a bit. So. Take these to the cell point. We've got 21 bells here. So, what my thinking is try to see if we can upgrade this Deutz Far to a bigger horsepower one, perhaps a 7 or an 8 series. I think that will still be fine for the mapping act. There's a Deutz Far 9 we can buy, but I'm not sure if it's going to be too big for the lane, so. But yeah, we did also lease this bell loader because of the amount of slice bells we were having. We would require a lot of trips with that little wagon we had, so lease this. That was for about 1200. But yeah, I think about 12 or no, 2500 it was to lease, was it? So it's 50 grand brand new. Yeah, 2575. But you know what? It's definitely been worth it. But we may need to take out a loan. Ooh, that John Deere. I think I just do love the immersiveness with the traffic, the lanes. That's a beautiful sunset. It's like sun is setting. That's just absolutely beautiful it is. And also we've been able to do a lot of this size work contracts with using the equipment from one contract. Haven't completed that contract yet to get paid for it. So we're still using that equipment. So yeah, a bit cheeky using contract equipment from one contract and use it for like doing two other contracts, but Let's go and undo these bells. I'm not sure how much of this we'll get for ourselves. There we go, mine's going up. Oh, a few, fair few bells at least. That is 25 grand in bells, and that's that contract complete. And let's go to. Defend Vario, this is again a contract equipment tractor. Because uh, I don't want full heck it, let's use it for ourselves so 
we need to go to the BGA, which I think is down here. But yeah, let's just get a map of it. So, out of here, turn left, and then turn right just before the shop. And it's somewhere down there. Is it left out here? Yep. Clear, clear. Yeah, that monster down the right did extract our view on the right there a little bit. But yeah, so we've got four 125, no, four 150 centimeter bells. Uh, we was able to squeeze one more 125 centimeter bell, so I think it would say take two or three of these, and the rest we'll have for ourselves. Left out of here. Yeah, left. I'll get used to where we need to go eventually. Just as I do these contracts, just been going around and just enjoying everything. But as much as doing contracts is good and that, we need to focus on our farm next because we need to get things underway, get things going. In terms of doing silage for ourselves feed the cows because oh yeah the cows do need food soon and for the time being for this rest of this year and into next year I am more than happy to feed them to not to more silage not as effective I know but okay we need to turn right at some point was it yeah the right just before the farm shop So, so, yeah, this right here. Just careful of the cars. But, yeah, in terms of what else we're going to do here, uh, I don't think we're going to do too many production chains here. Honestly, I'm not sure what, sure what production chains are there on this map. Swear ourselves a sec. 12.4 tons. And I'm guessing silage goes over here. Okay, that's sorry out. Please say you'll take some. Oh, I don't have to say you have to load it. Ah, uh, yeah, we're going to need to load it ourselves, haven't we? Fair enough. Needs to go in there, so let's go and grab you and take you to the BGA. Actually, you we can return because I think we'll go and buy you actually. But yeah, let's head to the BGA and get those unloaded. There we go. So let's just go and grab these bells. That's two. So these things go in here, right? Oh, yeah, you need two bells. Let's go grab the others. There we go. And you know what, we could keep these and that, but we need some money at the moment to fund like our bathing equipment and that, so that's another five grand. And the last bell, we'll get about two grand from this almost. One thousand eight hundred basically, so almost two grand. And so we don't occur another daily fee on these. I am going to return a lot of these. I like actually just all of it. And what we need to do now is figure out 
how we're going to acquire a loan, so I don't know what the local bank here is, so actually, how much do we weigh? 9.6 tons. Yeah, I'm going to go to the dealership and acquire about a loan, see who we need to speak to. Perhaps see if we can speak to someone this evening. Yeah, I know it's a bit late, but I think we'll need something like a something like a 200 grand loan we may need to something like that 150 200 grand to get what we need but anyways here on the ship actually what's rear I am gonna fill up that's really to top up and actually oh, your fuel price not too bad. 167 quid for that. In today's economy, that's actually quite good, actually. <laughs> On fuel price, so. I'm just going to park up over here. There we go. Stick between the white lines. Even though we're in a massive tractor. But yep, I'm going to speak to the dealership. See what help they can provide for us, and then we'll meet in the morning and see where we stand. Well, good morning, and yeah, got a loan. Went to the pub afterwards after acquiring all the equipment we need, and we're just heading back to the farm because I've just been told they have been delivered so. We still got our, our dogs for here. I was tempted to sell this so that we don't have to take as much of a loan. But all in all, we got to 200 grand out of a loan. We did try to ask for 250. Bank said no, or the post office, post office said no. But eventually, we settled on 200. Why is this car breaking? I know it's got a light on for so constantly break and try to break check us, but oh, oh. move. Yeah, he has bricks on all the time. Turn right here. Man, crazy cars. Oh, our fellow tractor driver is following us. But yeah, so 200 grand though. We bought a brand new Deutsche Far 7 series. That, and with everything we needed for it, cost us 160 grand. And then we bought some different wind rowers and headers compared to what we've been previously been using because I spoke to a few people at the pub and have some other local farmers. And they gave us some recommendations of what we could go with that would suit the local landscape and still be useful in the lane so I'm just gonna park this up here for a sec. So obviously we've got the motor that we've been using before and I did buy the bell loader. But yeah this is the Deutz Far 7250 TTV. And that's got something like yeah 247 horsepower so not too bad of a price. For a tether we got the Converdant 85112 and then for our Wind Rover I started to go with the Con, not the Con, the Crone Swadro and uh, we have a look, so the Wind Rover 9.7 metres and the Tedder is 11.2 metres so some pretty big equipment, I do admit to that Maybe difficult on some small fields, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. However, we need to do a few things urgently because I should never use this because the cows they need food desperately. Doing all the contracts and that, we sort of neglected our cows, so they've only got 8,000 liters of grass slash hay left. We ain't gonna have enough time to do slide edge because they're gonna run up before then so we're gonna have to do a quick emergency provision of grass yeah we'll do grass bait it or pick up and feed them to them directly 
They need straw urgently, but we do have a straw belt, so... So yeah, a few things we need to do. Uh, I'm not going to use the loader, the loader for that, for the bells and that, because we can just pick them up from the field and then take them over here. So yep, get us all done, and then we'll hopefully start doing some soy sampling, because we need to get that done as well. Cows happy and taken care of, so if we have a look, it took all of that straw we got. So, 83,000 litres of straw, not sure how long that's going to last, but it's got to last for some time. So, but yeah, now they need grass slash hay, and we'll just give them grass since grass and hay doesn't make a difference in, in terms of the effectiveness of the feed calves the calves they have been given some milk so they're up to eight thousand liters of milk already they do have tmr in there but they'll go for the milk first that's why they prefer milk but they'll go with tmr and the same with the silage and hay but boy this swad row it makes it so easy because it's all off well you win row rather than leaving the center it goes to one side so we just do we just did a couple of laps and that to the point where at this end it's just a massive pile so you know what we're just going to leave that there for now we'll get the rest of this wind road we did remove the hedge here to create a bit of a cheeky access path because now what we need to do is quickly give them some food and uh, yep yeah, obviously the Vimir 
shore blower, that was the least, so that can be returned. Don't need that at the moment. But it does make me think with the whole TMR situation, what we can do is just get a lot of the materials get mixed up and ready, or get the materials in ready. The, the bells stroll, the size pit filled up, and then a few bells of grass and hay, or hay not grass. And then we can just feed them into the mixer, rent one out for a day or two, or for a month. And then, yeah, feed the cows in, turn it. So, right, so how does this work? It is technically a leveler, but I think. sensors and all that. What are we adjusting here? Ah, that's it. So it's R1. There we go. Now I got it. So, in theory, I should just pick all this up. The lever, so with a full. So I swear I saw like Dagwin that using this. Oh, he knows just seven now, so that sucks. Let's try to do it the front way. I thought you could pick up like size and all that with this, but I guess you can't. Just again, it's just them now, so oh, that's a bugger. So it looks like we need to lease out a forage wagon to get this all picked up because if you beat it. I don't even know if we're going to bail and it would work in terms with feeding it to the cows and that straight as a bell. Because they didn't do it with straw. Unless it's just straw and these blowing and then we can get away with beating it and dropping the bells to the sides without having to chop it. Let's try beating it first. Let's see if that works. But yeah, I'm not too sure. Alright, so here we go. Let's see what happens here. Just get a full bell. And let's go around again. Get the beater. I just want to see if this actually works. So that's two. Fair enough. So now what we need to do is grab. Don't know why we still got that because we've returned the equipment from the contract. But anyways, minor discrepancy there. So now let's go and see if this works. If it works, then we can get away with doing some bigger bells, perhaps, or just a couple of big bells so that the cows have enough food for now. But yeah, I've just got no idea, but also we really need to start doing that silage as well. First of all, 
Let's see how this goes. Oh! Alright, that's good. That's very, very good. So they got a few bells. So you know what? Let's select 180 semi capacity. I will just get a few more. I say one or two more bells that he's done up. Feed them to the cows. And then, you know what? That'll be fine for them for now until we can get some more silage done. Also, you've got a few grass fields, got this field to do. So, you've got this field. We've also got this one over here, 63. And two of these big fields for silage. But whether or not is actually consuming it too quickly, because that was pretty easy to fill up. So let's try to do it with a server speed, just to see the fill rate. No, it seems to be filling as normal, so. There we go. And you know what? That will do for now. The rest could be used as silage, but we need to think about a forage wagon. Oh, go with the TARDIS. That's 52 grand though. We need something cheap. Even that alone is 30 grand. We do can't afford it. Hundred grand. So really something like one of these three would do us. Slide generative, yes. Leave that for now. I will focus on that in the next episode, but because we really do start taking care of our soil so grab you as he said we know the cows has got enough food for now till well if you get the silage done today let's get a bunch in today and then that'll be ready is it a month or two months they take to ferment I think it's a month they take to ferment now that's case in. Yeah, and what? I think we'll do that, but it's just so finicky of like figure out what's best to feed the cows, how much they'll need. And that's the problem for us. We're taking over this farm now. Yeah, they had some food already, but they didn't have all the equipment, and we really need to cash in that urgently. So. Three one thousand years. That should be enough. So now we need to start soil sampling our fields. So to do that, we we'll need to grab the Iceria Scout. So there we go. Over the corner. So what we can do is, well already what we can do is do two fields, do our wheat, what well, was our wheat field, and the grass field we just done. So 65, ooh, 65 and 66. And we can just get a baseline on the soil quantity of how fertile is it, and to refer to the yield bonus and all that. So I'm thinking, do something like that. I don't mind doing a little bit of overlapping. And then just go up a bit more. There we go. 
sword type number two done. And to send it off is that one. So two samples taken. And how much is each sample going to cost us? Not too much. And already we can have a quick look at our fields and that. And it is, as I suspected, sandy loam. So we need to get all that done to help to get that environmental score up. Also needs to work on the tillage. Apparently, yeah, tillage, weed control, nitrogen. And already they've gone down quite badly and that environmental score, because it's below 50, we do get a penalty as you see. Your environmental score decreases your sell price by 2%. So we need to work on that and get that up so whether or not we can get away with for example a lot of these fields before we start mowing them perhaps but anyway so what we're going to do is get a lot of this done get as much of this done we can and then just see where we are in terms with the equipment of how quick are we to take care of this farm? What do we need to do to the fields and that to get that yieldage up? Because if we have a look now, see no data. But in theory, if we go over here, it should. So, yep, there we sand. Got zero nitrogen. And pH is okay. Of course, the pH and nitrogen levels, all that depends on like the crop and that. So, like, well, P is more than nitrogen. So, of course, the fields needs lime in. We didn't have a lime spreader. Oh, how much is that? How much is this going to be for a lime spreader? That's the thing I need to think about. Is that? Oh, do, 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 do get a cheap one here get an extended version get an extension spur system so that's going to be two grand to lease so and that's the thing more equipment to lease out so we really need to work on that side quite important here because that could be the difference between this farm being profitable and not. And even as it kicks off we sacrifice the cows in terms of only give them hay in that grass and hay and we sell the silage. I just don't know. <laughs> A lot of things to think about but anyways we'll get us done. And I'll see you folks in a few moments.
there we go, we're on to our last field now, and oh boy, I think most of our fields are a bit muddy, they are, in terms of the yield potential and that, and not being the most fertile, I did suspect that, that was a rough guess for what we told by the data that we had at the time. All I'm hoping is possibly these hilly side fields are a bit more fertile than our main majority of our fields. If that's the case then we may have well actually we don't have to but what thing I'm trying to words one thing that we may do actually is when we go and purchase new land we go for the more difficult terrain north side of the river because I generally think that's what's probably best for us in that and already from the samples we've done so far that's cost us a grand ok we're missing little bits here and there but we're getting the majority of the field in that so we know what where we know what it's like roughly I'll get up bit up there just because it's a significant portion. There we go. Let's get that. But yeah, it's not all. There's like there's meadow grass here, and this more of a full full grass, I think. At least that's what how it looks like to me in that. But fast case then. That's good, do have to plow the field. But I think we actually may have to plow these fields at some point. It's not so much for hiring a worker in that, because a lot of these we may just end up doing ourselves in that, but there are some oak trees I think they are in the field, so maybe worth cutting some of them down and get a cheap bit of timber. I think perhaps two more after this. But yeah, most of our fields are sandy loam. 62 is, I think that's loam green. What's green? Well, loam, loamy sand is the majority of our fields, and the rest is sandy loam. But what about these fields up here? This one and one more. There are some decent sized fields up here on the north side of this river here, northeast corner of the map. And that's the last one. And that is sample 42. Nope, sample 41, so we'll send those off. Hopefully it's not too expensive. That's going to take some time to get sent off and processed and gates up here. That's the good thing about doing all these is sort of have a proper look at our fields, like the cow fields. The shortcut we well had, the shortcut that we could have took when we did 62, and when we went all the way around to get to 60 five in that. And also I did sample the, the calf pasture, pasture because whether or not we'll be able to keep those or not the calves long term. Two grand that costed us so let's get us back to the farm, park it up and then we can have a deep dive in basically how basically what's the profitability of this farm like land we acquired in that from the old farm. Perhaps I could explain why the old farm wasn't as profitable as it could be or should be. And I do have news, there are a few cl clusters around the other farm fields. I think I was a, was a lot beetle. But perhaps that, at some point we could look at some of these cars and that has been abandoned. 
around the place and possibly acquire a car and restore it to its former glory, but yeah. Yeah, yeah there's like a few of these old combines over here now. Sure, I'll have a look a sec. So, it's a lizard. Almost uh, looks like one of those like, bison harvesters and that. Because, yeah, it's open cabinet. So, I'm brushing the pit tires. Why they're often not on the combine, I don't know. Flat tire. Try to get a better look. Maybe an option to see if we can get one of these combines and recover them. It's on. Oh, come on, you had to right away go! Jeez Louise! Man, these AI. Just traffic is... Is that to get us? I swear it's out to get us. And there we go, back at the farm now. Getting quite late on the day now, so I think we need to have a bit of a dinner as well. Perhaps go to the pub, have a cheeky meal, but Oops. Let's go over here a bit more. But now let's have a look at our soil. So overall Soil sampling is well done. Not the maximum. And that's because, yeah, we've missed a few bits, but honestly, I didn't think that would make so much of a difference. But sort of see by the river, along the riverbed, and that it is quite it is loamy sand. And even when we go into the hilly areas, as uh, so there's a bit of a little end of a tributary. There's Sandy's Loamy Sand, not Sandy Loam. 62 is Sandy Loam. Then, as we get up to the more upper regions, it goes to a s section of silty clay, but then loam. Of course, this always affects the pH in that. As we have a look, yeah, difference in pH more acidic with the sandy loam but what does, what does that mean for yield potential don't know because we haven't done much of a sample yet but things like if we sort of highlight these some of these fields here like the expected yieldage is 79-80 percent with the sandy loam it's a bit better at 95% 66 because it's mostly sandy loam and salty clay it's just slightly above what it could be but 65 that is very high yieldage and again look at some of these sands up here 125% 123% so really if we require more fields how much is that 130 grand 62 73 grand get 82 grand for that field but don't really want to sell that one not selling the farm So yeah, overall, having a look at it, in terms of the yieldage, we are going to get great for where we are at the moment. So we are ready to move north, that we currently know is better bioavailability. Just having a quick scan from around, and it's the same story, yeah, like very clay-like. The soil distribution ain't great. It's mostly, if not all, 
Silty Clay or Lonely Sand. But as we go up further north, so yeah, doing that. So really, these four fields we can do with acquiring. Get those converted into an arable field, and that'd be a very good yield potential. Ah, uh, that's just the sell points there, but overall, yeah, things to think about. But at the end of the day, we just gotta accept the reality. This is what we acquired. We really didn't do too much research before we bought the farm. Could have sent some prospectors out, sample the ground, sample the area a bit more in detail before we made a purchase on this, but well, here we are, anyways. We got what we got. It is what it is, and yep, yeah, just gonna have to make the most of it. But anyways, that is where we'll leave it today. So next time, we need to work on silage, get the rest of it done, get the mowing underway, because we are desperate for silage. And we'll try get much of it into the bunker silo today, so our sides are fermenting out overnight. But regardless, as always, hope you enjoyed the episode. If so, smash that button. Feel free to comment down below. If you want to share some, please be my guest. If you're not subscribed to the channel yet, then please consider. But, for what you to do, hope you're going to say. But for now, this is me, Farmer, and Extreme. And I'll see you all very soon.